So um, I'm going to now just quickly uh, nip through the panel behind me and ask them if they have any further suggestions. I'm not uh, looking for speeches or uh, in, uh, good intentions, but for practical um, steps that people can take in order to improve the situation for uh, refugees. Um, so first, let me ask uh, Mehbooba, is she there? Mehbooba Saraj? No? No. Um, well, Patricia Grossman, if I can ask her, does she have any further comments to make? I think she's gone as well. Uh, Mudassir, the CEO of Sharp, do you have any further suggestions to make? I think everyone up here is exhausted at the moment. <laughs> but let me now turn to the audience. Ah, Patricia's there. Patricia, do you have any comments to make on what you've heard today? Is there, are there any practical suggestions? that people can t further take to improve the situation. Yes, yeah, sorry, um, the, the, we lost connection for a bit. So um, yes, well, I think we've made several, a number of recommendations that I think would be very good if both Pakistan and concerned countries um, should take. As I mentioned when I spoke before, um, paths to resettlement for those Afghans who are particularly at risk um, those who um, are at risk because of um, their human rights work or as journalists or that might face reprisals if they return to Afghanistan. That's one, and that's where we haven't seen enough countries step forward to, to provide those kind of paths to, to, safe, to safety. Um, then on the economic front, we've made a number of uh, recommendations too. You know, when the, the economy in Afghanistan went sort of over the cliff um, after the the Taliban takeover because, of course, um, funding, much of the international development funding uh, was pulled out and that left the burden on humanitarian aid groups who simply cannot uh, provide, can, cannot fill that gap. They've said so to us explicitly and we, we put out a report um, just in February about the health care crisis. And so there needs to be support for key areas, you know, things that are essential to livelihoods income generating, such as electricity, water management, and so on, and public health, um, that would uh, dry, help address that. And of course, we you know, you know, keep calling for, as, as many Afghans do and everyone does with the Taliban, to, to end these terrible restrictions that prevent girls um, from going and women from going to school and university and so on. Um, but in the short term, since we don't see progress on that yet, is to address these uh, pathways to safety for Pakistan to stop these coercive um, sort of approaches to pushing uh, Afghans out, for others to step forward to find ways to provide support for Afghans, um, and to not forget Afghanistan. I mean, Afghanistan is now uh, a crisis for more than, you know, it's been 46 years since the war started. And of course, there are other crises, but this is one where many countries had a hand in and were deeply involved and are now having a kind of amnesia about it, and that shouldn't happen. They need to turn their attention back to how they can help Afghans um, get through this, this period of crisis. Thank you. Uh, I am back on. And if you want me to, um, because I didn't hear you before, um, I do have some other suggestions. If, you, if, I can, if I can talk about it right now, will that be OK? Uh, yes, OK. Please go ahead. Be brief. I, I will be brief. Uh, the one thing that I really want, uh, I, I think, is something that, that the, the government of the Pakistan, and not only of Pakistan, actually of the, the people of the world, the governments of the world, not the people, the governments of the world, they should, they should uh, get together and decide uh, what is it that they really want to do with Afghanistan? W what is it? You as our neighbors, you know, Pakistanis as our neighbors, you have never been very very straightforward with the Afghans at all. We really don't know exactly what are your intentions about Afghanistan, and honestly. So every single time there is something happening, you do have a hand in it completely. I know that, and we all know that. The world knows that. But do you know that? 
Do you know as the people of Pakistan? Because, uh, you know, the talks in Pakistan also, out of the mouths of some of the people in there, are very different. Some people say one thing, some people say another thing, and it all depends how, in, how much influence they do have in the government, you know, to change their minds. So, like right now, in the, in the United Nations, there was a, you know, a meeting that was taking place, and Pakistan is the country that actually decided that, uh, that Afghanistan uh, should, should, not, should not go through with that, um, you know, with that decision, which was to, you know, to, to get somebody um, as, a, as a, you know, that this was that, that Turkish gentleman's, you know, um, uh, Mr. Farid's uh, um, uh, suggestion to Afghanistan. And I think Pakistan got involved in that, and, and they didn't let it happen. So, so what is it? Are we, are we, uh, Afghanistan is a sovereign country. Are we not? Do we decide for ourselves? Don't we? And, and then, and then you, and Pakistan keeps on doing these things to us. Like they close the border suddenly. And all of our goods stays on one side of the border and cannot get, get to Afghanistan. And that hurts us economically. And then suddenly you sent us, you know, hundreds of thousands of our refugees, which have become Pakistanis. And they have the Pakistan, you know, um, paperwork and everything. You send them across the border to us. So we really don't know. And not only you are doing that, our, all our neighbors are doing it. Iran is doing it. Russia is doing it. China is doing it. And the world is doing it. So, so we, as the people of Afghanistan, we are completely lost. We don't know what is happening. We really don't know. And at the same time, what is happening in Afghanistan, our, our, our personal security in this country is disappearing. I am talking to you right now on the on, on this program. I am not sure whether I will be still alive, all available, or free in the next 24 hours. I don't know. I've been living my life in Afghanistan like that. And not only me, everybody else is doing that. So, so this is, you know, the, the, the world needs a, an honesty, something that we really have to sit down and talk and find out where are we? What is it that we want? Because that's not that's not getting us any place. That's not getting us anywhere good. I can promise you that. It's really not. So tell us, that's something that you have to decide. We don't. We cannot. Not. Because in every step of the way that we go, Pakistan in one way or another stops in front of us. Everything. What is that game for us? I don't understand it. And I'm sure you do. Or people, people in Pakistan might, or maybe might not. I don't know. But the result of it in Afghanistan are terrible. Terrible. I can tell you that much. Thank you. Thank you, Mehbooba. Again, another heartfelt statement by Mehbooba Jan. Um, I, I will just add to her and say that in all the uh, coverage of Afghanistan that I've been doing since 1979, uh, I can assure you that every single country in the region has interfered with Afghan aspirations, interfered with Afghan yes. needs and desires. And this interference, Pakistan is up there very much so, so is, as she said, so is Iran, Central Asia, Russia, all these countries have been interfering in Afghanistan. What is really needed is for countries to pull back and say, let the Afghans decide okay. for themselves. Although many Afghans also want help in being able to devise a proper democratic system for the country. Thank you, Mehbuba. That is very, very, very much appreciated. Um, is there anyone behind me still who has something to say? 